Hello, my name is Patrick Boyle. Welcome back. So today we're going to learn about volatility trading and we're going to learn about how option traders trade and how they try and profit from the volatility of the price of the underlying that, that their option is based upon. Um, if all of this is new to you, uh, th this video is part of a longer series that I'm doing on uh, dynamic hedging. And if you wanna watch that whole series, I've put it in a playlist uh, that is linked to right there. So anyhow, Today we're just talking about volatility trading and how that works. So firstly, we have to look back at the idea of uh, the Black-Scholes model and how we price options and kind of why the Black-Scholes model is actually useful and, and interesting and why it matters to, uh, to people in the investment industry. So the Black-Scholes model tells you that if traders were able to risklessly delta hedge continuously, in the manner described, uh, in, in, in the manner that we're gonna describe in today's class, that um, this model would perfectly price options, okay? Now the problem is that there are of course some real world uh, issues with the Black-Scholes model. So in the real world, traders cannot always hedge continuously, right? You can't trade at every microsecond. And in fact, often they just do it daily, maybe at the close of day or hourly, or often they'll just wait till there's a big move and hedge, you know? So the real world is a little bit different than the world described by the Black-Scholes model. Equally, the underlying asset doesn't behave exactly the way it is described in the Black-Scholes model. Trading is not 100% continuous. Uh, asset prices jump on big news or on announcements or even just when the market is closed overnight. It's reasonable to expect the, the market to gap up or down by the next opening. Uh, volatility or, or uh, standard deviation is not stable over the life of the option and that's of course a, an important uh, part of the Black-Scholes model is that idea. And so because of these difficulties with perfectly and risklessly delta hedging options, volatility traders and market makers usually are going to charge a small premium to sell options above what might be the perfect Black-Scholes price. And this is essentially that they need to be compensated for the costs of what they're doing, right? Because how it often works in the options world is that there's lots of people who sort of like the idea of buying options. They like the idea, you know, buying a put option in order to insure their portfolio. It's a little bit like buying an insurance policy on your house or your car makes people comfortable. Someone has to sell that. And, you know, when we early on in this video series, we described the payoffs of being long and short options. I imagine lots of people who are new to this think, well, gosh, you know, I, I can understand why you would buy an option, but it seems unreasonably risky to sell an option. And it, it sort of is, unless you're overpaid for them, right? So essentially, sellers of options, they don't have to sell options. They can, they can do other things with their day, you know? They're really going to only sell options if they feel that they're being offered enough money to compensate them for doing the kind of work that we're about to describe today that involves delta hedging that option and trying to hopefully, uh, you know, hedge it out and end up with a small profit left over. So our sellers charge this premium because they're the counterparty with unlimited or nearly unlimited downside in the options payoff. And so for that reason, they're just not really gonna get involved a little bit like an insurance company. They're not gonna sell you an insurance policy at fair, fair value. They're gonna work out the fair value of your insurance policy and charge you a little bit more in order to make it reasonable for them to, you know, to go to all of this work. And the work isn't just the risk. There's kind of, there's all the sort of paperwork and IT uh, expenses associated with that. And that has to be encapsulated in this price as well. So that leads us to the idea that actually an option is like almost any other product that you might buy. The price of it kind of just relates to the cost of creating it, right? Like when you buy a pair of shoes, how much does a shoe cost? Well, it shouldn't cost less than the leather and the stitching and the, you know, the, the labor and whatever else that goes into it. Otherwise, people wouldn't want to make them. And so volatility traders, volatility arb traders, to a certain extent, kind of manufacture options for people to buy. 
So let's look a little bit at this idea of volatility arbitrage or what volatility traders do and see, uh, see how it might make sense for someone to do this. So in finance, volatility arbitrage is a type of statistical arbitrage that's implemented by trading a delta neutral portfolio that I've explained in earlier videos of an option and its underlier. The objective is to take advantage of differences between the implied volatility of the option, and I have a video on unimplied volatility if you need to watch that, but their objective is to take advantage of differences between the implied volatility of the option and their forecast of future realized volatility of the options underlier. Now, of course, the problem in there is it's not really an arbitrage. You know, early on when I explained what arbitrage was, this clearly isn't an arbitrage just because it's their forecast of volatility and that may or may not be right. You know, we'll have to find out over time whether that works. In volatility arbitrage, traders attempt to buy volatility when they believe it to be low and sell volatility when they think it is too high. Usually they don't have a directional opinion on the market, so they're not trading in order to profit from the price of the underlying moving up or moving down. They're simply trying to profit based upon their view on volatility. So how does this work? Well, the trader looks for options where the implied volatility is either significantly lower or higher than their forecast realized volatility for the underlying. So they're basically, when I say they look for ones where implied volatility is high, essentially that kind of means options that are too expensive because as you hopefully know from our earlier videos, the price of an option is very much tied to the implied volatility used in the calculation. Now, because the trader is not trading directionally, they don't care if these are calls or puts, okay? So an, a, a volatility trader is either, they either want to be long or short volatility, which means long or short options. Now, they don't care if they're puts or calls because they're gonna hedge out the directionality. They're just going to be exposed to this volatility portion of the option. So if you buy options and hedge the delta, you're long volatility. If you sell options and hedge the delta, you're short volatility. So basically, if you're long options, you're long volatility. If you're short options, you're short volatility. But you also have that directional component and you're able to get rid of that directional component through delta hedging. So over the holding period, our trader will realize a profit on the trade if the underlying realized vol is closer to our trader's forecast than it is to the market's forecast, which was the implied volatility. Um, the profit is extracted from the trade, and this is the important point, the profit is extracted from the trade through the continual re-hedging required to keep our portfolio delta neutral. So, as you can see up here on the screen right now, we've got a, our payoff diagrams of puts and calls, and you can be long or short them. And if you're long a call or long a put, you're long volatility, but then you need to hedge out the delta. And if you're short a call or short a put, you are short volatility, but of course you need to hedge out the delta once again, as described on that, uh, on that slide. So how do you extract the value? Well, once you have a delta neutral position, and I've kind of explained delta and delta neutral trading in, in an earlier video, once you have this delta neutral position, if the market moves, you find that you have to buy and sell the underlying in order to stay delta neutral. And that's because of gamma. Gamma is the amount the delta changes for a 1% change in the price of the underlying. Now, if this, th this hedging is going to generate profits and losses, if the underlying realizes the same volatility as was implied, then your hedging will cost you the amount of the premium you received or generate profits equal to the premium paid out. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's look at an example. Now in this example, I'm using this idea of 16% implied vol, and that's just because I've reverse engineered that from a 1% daily swings in the underlying would equal 16% implied vol. So if we bought a call with 16% implied volatility and sold the underlying against it to be delta neutral, if the market never moved again between initiating this position, our delta would never change, right? And if our delta doesn't change, we find that we're never hedging. Now, if we're never hedging, 
we, we can't generate profits or losses, right? So we paid, we bought a call, so we're long volatility. We're expecting it to move more than 16% standard deviation or 1% a day. And what we find is that it doesn't move at all. And what that means is that we lose the entire premium, right? Because we don't make anything back at all from our hedging. Now, someone else who sold us that option will have received the full premium that we paid them and the price of the underlying won't have moved at all and so they will uh, will never have to rehedge and thus they will have managed to keep the entire premium so we were in that example long volatility and wrong about the volatility we were extremely wrong so let's look at the opposite of that same same example we bought a call 16 percent implied volatility sold the underlying against it in order to be delta neutral it's a 0.5 delta option and instantly what happens is the price of the underlying falls straight to zero, right? No, no sooner have you, have you bought the call and hedged yourself than the price of the underlying falls to zero. Now at zero, the, the delta of this option will also be zero, right? So we were short 50 shares, we have to buy all 50 of them back, right? Because we, we no longer need to have that position. Now we'll imagine that we do that and instantly the price rockets and it doesn't rocket a little bit, it goes up like a, you know, it goes to a thousand, we'll say if it started at a hundred, it goes to a thousand. So we recalculate our delta and what do we find? We find that the delta now is around one. And so what do we have to do? We have to sell 100 shares. And so we'll imagine if this just kept on happening. So we were expecting the underlying to swing 1% a day. And within a single day, we've got these massive thousands of percentages of swings, right? And every time it makes these big swings, it keeps fluctuating between zero and a thousand. And every time it does that, we're either buying or selling the underlying. And this is, of course, generating us huge profits, right? We're, we're hedging our options, so that's good. We're not really you know, losing money on the option because we keep re-hedging. But not only that, we're making huge profits from the hedging. And this is because the price is moving way more than expected. So in our last example, it moved way less than expected. In fact, it didn't move at all. And we lost all of the money that we made in premium. And in this example, it moved way, way, way more than was expected and we're making way, way, way more back than we spent on premium to begin with. So hopefully you understand with this example how volatility trading works. So essentially if it swung around about 1% a day and we diligently re-hedged our delta as, as described uh, in my earlier video on delta hedging, you would find that you make back the amount of money that you spent in options premium. But uh, when it moves less, you make back less. And when it moves more, you make much more than you spent in options premium. So that's really what it means to be long volatility. And then obviously the person at the other side of each of those trades will say with short volatility, and they'll have really the exact opposite P&L, assuming that they don't sort of hedge identically, or, or if they do hedge identically to us, they'll have the exact opposite P&L to us. So in the first example, They'll, they'll have uh, kept the entire premium. And in the second example, they'll have lost a ferocious amount of money because of these large swings. So hopefully that video was helpful. Um, if, you'd liked, if you liked it, and you must have to watch almost 30 minutes of it, please hit the like button. If you wanna see more like this, hit the subscribe button. And if you're interested in the book that all of this is based on, it's called Trading and Pricing Financial Derivative derivatives and it's linked to in the description below so have a great day and uh, tune in again for more of these videos and, and do comment below if you have any questions about this talk to you later bye